we've definitely experienced the new year dude the new year it's been nuts i can't believe we've been in the new year for two weeks i can't believe there have been five presidential assassinations that's insane <laughs> we're almost out of presidents almost when we get down to the mailmen <laughs> <laughs> are they in line for the presidency i don't think it goes down that far but like that's are, effectively how it works our mailmen <laughs> in line i can't believe that's the first result <laughs> I... <laughs> all right all right well they were not anymore but yeah they were okay so if you were to assassinate uh, a hundredish people it would start up with the oldest mailman in the country like like whoever's <laughs> not not like the oldest dude working as a mailman but like whoever's been there the longest like yeah you could be working as a fucking mailman for 30 years Oops. and then one day you're the goddamn president because everyone else is dead <laughs> i love that but yeah uh today we'll be playing or i'll be playing jump king because yeah. i bought it on sale for six dollars and i want to play it I've seen a lot about this game, but never seen this game, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, I know there's a very Shit. active speedrun. Oh, Shit. my God. <laughs> this isn't I... making a good showing of somebody who has actually made it farther than this. I, I, I know this game is ran, and that's basically the first way I found out it exists was it was on the front page of speedrun.com, like, almost every day for, like, a year. In fact, it's probably still on the front page if I check now, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not, it's not that deep. Yeah. It seems like a fun game. It's got an extremely active community, so yeah, there's got to be some merit to it. It looks amazing. Uh-huh. Like this. Which it should, because you're going to be looking at it for a long time. Yeah. This is, uh, this reminds me a lot of Bennett Foddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, getting over it. Yeah, why am I being an idiot? <laughs> I can do this. I've gotten to the bargain area. The bargain area? It's a bargainville? Something like that. Why is it called bargainville? Is everything there cheap? Uh, maybe it is for its residents, but you can only buy one thing there. And you can't actually get it until the very end of the game. What? sounds like inconvenience phil uh it gives you like boots that they is that the snow boots uh no because oh. these these are boots with wings which i don't oh. know what they do okay they probably give you like a double jump or like a yoshi flutter yeah oh goodbye Fuck. oh okay at least you're not totally boned yeah what the hell is the point of the platform on the left that, oh, it catches you when you fall down. Ah, that makes sense. Because <laughs> you'll fall down from another screen and land there. This one. Because if okay. you miss this jump, you, you fall can down. You your head on it, yeah. Is that, is that poop? Uh, yeah, these are sewers. This, that's nasty. Uh-huh. I didn't expect this game to oh, have... Oh, you know what? It's just I want... covered in shit stains immediately. You know what I don't want? What? What is that? Is a hat? Yep. How did you get this? How did you know this was here? <laughs> I found it randomly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is this guy a king? Or like, what is he? He's a knight who becomes a king when he reaches the smoking hot babe at the top. Okay. <laughs> that is the plot of the game. I forgot. You're going for the smoking hot babe at the top. Yeah. That's it. That's all you're doing. <laughs> Man, you cannot make this jump. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice bonk. That was a terrible a bonk. bonk. <laughs> there we go. There's some really mean jumps in this game. I don't really want to know what that is. This is nasty. Why is this like the first area? It's the second. I guess. Really, it's the third. What? No, it's that the second. That tree was red, therefore it's a different area. Uh, I guess. Shit, no, that was my <laughs> fault. I should have known. I already know a way to get past that every time without having to actually worry about it. And I didn't do it because I'm an idiot. I did, I'm still on the whole presidency thing. 
Ah, like, uh, yeah. I'm looking at this now, and it's crazy. I I had no idea how many people are in line for the presidency. So like, many. <laughs> you, it, what? I know that it's for preparedness, but like, can you imagine? Oh wow! What yep. A jump. See, there you okay. go. Can you imagine a situation where literally every government worker is dead? What has to happen? Uh, I think they had it for like extreme emergencies where like everyone was dead. Like, a, like every a, single person in the White House died. Like a nuclear bomb goes off and the entire state of Washington is just gone. Well, Washington is uh, in the northwest. Yeah. Washington D.C. is what we're talking about. Yeah, the, it's the, the district, state of Washington. It's the like, District of Columbia. I know it's the District of Columbia, Fuck but like it. it's still the state of Washington, even though the state of Washington is a different geographical place. Okay. Like, I wasn't referring to it geographically. Okay. Yeah, there's a good. Uh, uh, I've never heard of this website in my life, so I guess I'll vouch for them because I'm looking at it now. But mentalfloss.com. Mental? A, yeah, mental floss. Like you know, if you, it, maybe that's kind of on brand for us. It's like floss through the brain. <laughs> but uh, they have a good article on the list of uh, presidential presidential succession. Uh huh. Speaking of strange things on lists. A new record was broken not that long ago for, I guess, the tiniest book ever sold at auction? Okay. That's a, it's gotta be a real tiny book then. There was a tiny book measuring just five millimeters on each side it's in not Brussels. not usable. <laughs> Apparently it is. <laughs> All right. If you have a magnifying glass, you can read the whole book. Okay. Because the font is to scale. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this was done by hand. This was not uh, printed. If it was, it would be illegible. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, but would you like to guess how much this book that's the size of the tip of your pinky finger costed? Mm, if it's claiming to be the smallest book, ten grand. Nah. Nah. I go over. Uh, yeah, I misread this at first. I was about to make a funny outrage, but like, <laughs> you're actually over. Yeah, I thought it was four million, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I bothered talking about it. Okay. It's <laughs> like that's. Uh, that would be ridiculous. Because that's what I thought. I thought this was a f ridiculous story about a book selling for $4 million that's the size of, like, a drop of water. <laughs> but, but it's actually a four grand. Okay. Which is still ridiculous. Yeah, it's but still a lot. At least that makes some sort of sense, I guess. I could see that being a fun, funny novelty. That being said, how do you make sure that gets home without losing it? And... What the Somebody hell? could steal it from you and you wouldn't even notice. What the hell would you do with it? Read it. Like hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I do not believe. I guess it could be a conversation topic. Fuck! Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that area is designed like that. Oh. Oh my god, this this isn't even a single copy of the book. There's hundreds of them. There's hundreds of this thing? Arenberg Auctions said the book, which contains the Catholic Lord's Prayer, printed in Dutch, English, American English, fr huh? Anyway, French, German, Spanish, and Swedish, was one of a few hundred published by the Gutenberg Museum in Mainz, Germany in 1952. Okay. As a fundraising project to pay for post-war reconstruction efforts. All right. That makes the product even more confusing. <laughs> what were they selling it for back then? What man? Because a woman couldn't have purchased this. It's got to be like 
may probably like some weird Christian thing where it's like, I can't carry a normal Bible on me, so I got my mini Bible. I've got my microscopic Bible. <laughs> yeah, like how uh, we were given pocket constitutions in government. Yeah, like I got like a pocket bill of rights and a pocket constitution, and my teacher was telling me I should keep it with me at all times in case I get arrested, and like, I, I think I can remember the Fifth Amendment. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's gonna look good for me in court if I if I have it with me at all times. Well, it's, there's, it's not like it's an admission of guilt just because you have a constitution on you. You could just claim you're yeah. patriotic. The, the Constitution, sure. The Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights, maybe. That's a harder sell. Now, this guy's got some shoes. This guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's got some big shoes. Also, he does, in fact, have hands and a tiny body. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's about to take a shit at all times. <laughs> yeah. He's like O-Chunks from Super Paper Mario. It's like he just <laughs> flies away with his farts. The auction house said the book shit. had been expected to sell for up to $1,700. But surprised auctioneers by fetching a high bid of $3,949.61. So it did sell for almost 10 k No. No? Maybe I just $3, heard... $3,000 is not 10 k you, you see, I heard 9 $3,949. I probably was just like, 9. Yes, two, two nines. No, it's just 3... Yeah. My, my brain just wanted to be right. The printed text is so <laughs> minuscule that you cannot read it with a naked eye. But if you have a strong magnifying glass, it, pre it pre paints a clear picture. Yeah, you need a strong magnifier, not just any yeah, magnifier. Not some baby bitch magnifying glass. You need to have your fucking go go gadget inspectatron on you yeah. to be able to read this shit. You gotta layer like three magnifying glasses on top of each other. It's like, you need to have those, if you wanted to read this in public, you gotta have those Spy Kids glasses that fold up in like a thousand more pairs of glasses so that you can read this. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. The book Whoop. came with the mental, the mental, the game, the, fuck. The book came with the metal printing plates used to make it. That's pretty neat. That's neat, yeah. You could make more mini books. I don't know if I need the, to make more. Well, it's an interesting idea. What if Nintendo just sold you the way to make micro discs at home? The GameCube hardware might not have been like so terrible. <laughs> yeah. But alas, we have made it to Bargainburg. Yeah. See this this where it was Berg, not Bin, uh, Ville. Ah. Uh, Motherfucker. Nice jump. Now I'm down. Oh no, no. <laughs> Welcome back. So yeah, for for those at home, uh so far I've put three hours like just over into the game. So this isn't quite my first time having played, but I haven't beaten it yet. I've never seen it before. Yep. It's a very pretty game. It definitely looks fun. I will end up buying it. I might stream it over at twitch.tv slash weatherman yeah, with a timer, out. so I'll upload it as a speed run. <laughs> the first run, six hours. Dude, I do that all the time. It's so fun to like boot up a game for the first time, throw a timer up, and then just break it if you can. And if you can't figure out how, then just play the game to completion, then upload it to the speedrun archive. I want to do that to Sonic Heroes so bad, just so that the poor moderators have to watch a 40-hour run. <laughs> oh god. I can't believe people like that game enough to dedicate days, let alone weeks or months to it. Yeah, that's a uh... it's a shit game. What a horrible. Sorry all you hero stands, you're a playing horrible, a shit game. Horrible game. It's just N nothing good about it at all. Yeah, except the music. And not the main theme. That, that game, main theme's pretty, pretty booty bungus. Yeah, but you know what? It's the one that sticks in my head the most. Well, it's because it's one fucking word over and over. <laughs> exactly. It works. You know what else sticks in your head really well? The fucking Black Knight theme. Yeah. 
It's because it's just whoa. Yes. What is the bird? Uh, so the birds are what you need to get. Eventually, he'll drop that ring, and then once you come all the way back down to that guy, who is in the first screen of the bargain, uh, Berg. Yeah. He'll give you the boots. Ah, okay. Yeah. I had to look this up because I was like, what the hell is this bird for? Should I even care? Apparently, yes. Oh. Nah, this is fine. Okay. Yeah, this guy. He talks to you. He looks like Spamton. <laughs> he does. These boots are fit for a legendary hero. I had another article here, but it's like not very fun to read, so I'll just read the... I'll read the, the, the top of it and then just okay. explain it. All right. Actually, I'm not even going to read the top of it because it's clickbaity and stupid. No! <laughs> uh, no! Nice job. That's the worst place to have ended up. Like, apparently, Tobey Maguire, back, uh, back before Spider-Man 1, when he was auditioning for Spider-Man 1, he was super pissed off when the director made him try out. <laughs> oh. Like, resent resentful to this day that they didn't think he was good enough to be Spider-Man, who at the time was kind of like, not a nobody, but like, definitely not as big as he became uh -huh. after the Tobey Maguire films and like just the Spider-Man movies overall. Yeah. So he just got like pissed with the made me try out. Yeah, the and like fuck? and to this day he's still spiteful about it. No shit. I just think that's funny. Oh yeah. Like <sighs> You know, Tobey Maguire has been in a lot of movies. I've only I only know that he's been in the Spider-Man movies. Have you ever watched The Great Gatsby? Like the movie yeah. adaptation? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh I forgot I watched that. He's Rich Guy McWorthless in that movie. Is he? I don't actually know what that dude's name is, like the main character. But yeah, he's the, the... like what reporter or whatever. I don't fucking remember, dude. It's been since high school. Yeah. But, like freshman year of high school, yeah. But yeah, like he was the main character in The Great Shit. Gatsby. Okay. All right. Which I do not think he fit at all. But whatever. Yeah. They also that movie was weird. That movie was like trauma dump the movie. Uh-huh. They, they changed it. They changed it from the book, which was weird. They didn't change it too much from the book. They just changed the way the story was told, which made yeah. it very weird. Uh -huh. Because rather than the, the events happening naturally, it's him like talking about it with a therapist, uh -huh. which is just bizarre. Even if it makes sense, it's just a weird way to take the uh, to take the narrative. Yeah, it was very weird. Uh, So what have you been up to recently? Uh, I got this. Uh, I checked out the some of the different uh, keyboard settings on the one you sold me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I liked uh, Sus Ocarina. Dude, Sus Ocarina is so funny. <laughs> like, I, uh, it's not only a good sounding instrument, but it sounds really good when playing a Mung Drip. Yeah. What a womp. Yeah. It's just a funny instrument. I I need to get me a better keyboard now that I've got room, but I might mm -hmm. save until I have like more room. I don't know. I've always been more of a drummer. I do miss I do miss doing the drums. No. I'm gonna try and get me an electric drum set when I've got the space for it. Cause mm -hmm. man, I do love playing the drums. Ah oh, fuck. You know, if all three no. of us, if all three of us are musicians, we could make the Free Thinkers Association a band. <laughs> we could. <laughs> I do uh I do eventually want to get a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> what kind of fucked up band are we? we? We've got a MIDI keyboard, a hurdy gurdy, a guitar, and a tuba. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do? I don't know. I just think hurdy gurdies have a really cool sound. What does what sound does a hurdy gurdy make? Uh. It's you can make a bunch of different sounds with it. It's like 
a guitar that has a wheel that you spin the strings on and then you can push keys into the uh, strings. So like the marble machine? Oh my god, this thing looks so foreign. Yeah, that, it's super... Uh, one one uh, artist that I like that makes it is like Andre Vivignov, something along those lines. That would be the guy that makes a hurdy-gurdy. He doesn't make one, he uh, makes music with it. There's, there are a bunch of people that make hurdy gurdies. There's, I looked it up and the, I found some that sold for like, forty k. It can be a rather expensive instrument. What an interesting instrument to fixate on. Why yeah. specifically the hurdy gurdy? I just really like how it sounds. Like. I don't know, I just like- Oh, I also love how it sounds. It's that instrument. Yeah. Okay, it's the one that they use in Medieval Times. It goes like, doo, 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 doo. like, it's the main instrument that they use in like the medieval music. It sounds extremely medieval and I love it. Okay, we could make some songs. I need to learn electric guitar. And then you can be playing the hurdy gurdy. Yeah. And then Lane can play some sort of horrible brass instrument. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a what a team. <laughs> we'll we'll put out at least three songs. Maybe we'll record our own intro music, which will make literally no sense. No, it won't. <laughs> I, I'd have to learn a whole lot about music since I know absolutely nothing currently. Well, if we're going to be taught music by anybody, because I, I know probably more than you, but less than the average human. Oh, if you so, know literally anything, you know more than me, because yeah. I still struggle with, the uh, like, which keys are what. Yeah, that's uh, basically why I said I know more than you, but less than the average human. Because I know enough, but yeah. I do not know quite enough. You know enough to be like, that's a thing. Yeah, I know enough to recognize what I don't know. <laughs> I I know that for a fact I know nothing. Yeah. I'm like, like if we're on a 100 point scale, you're at like a fucking 14, I'm a 16. Yeah, which is interesting because I was actually taught how to play the acoustic guitar. Yeah, I started to learn. I got decentish at it in my own time. Uh -huh. I learned how to play the ukulele pretty well. Yeah, it's, but it's I learned not it very hard. Yeah, I learned. I was taught it because my parents were like, "You need to do something," and they couldn't find anything for me to do. So in between me playing a uh, soccer and lacrosse, I was taught guitar. Neat. Yeah. I uh, I really want to learn electric guitar. I've never had one, and I can absolutely afford one now. But That's good. I'm looking to pick up probably some sort of fender, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get some super fucking heavy strings for it and just <sighs> learn how to play it. I'd love to be able to shred. Yeah. I can make lots of money covering video game songs. Yeah, you could. I'd like to do like a whole one-man band thing like a lot of people do on the internet now. Where it's like they'll record all the instruments separately and then just string them together mm -hmm. digitally. Or they'll like. Uh, kind of like how uh, Smooth McGroove does his thing. With he acapella. Does a... yeah. yeah. There's a couple people that do stuff like that, like Johnny Atama, uh, Mr. Gametal. Like, ah, uh, yeah. A couple people do like. I don't want to come back here. <laughs> they have like basically a full band's worth of equipment and then they'll just record everything separately. And yeah, and just put it all together. And I that's, feel like it's got to be a lot of money. Have oh, a for full the, band's worth. Yeah, basically, because he's got an extremely high quality Casio keyboard. Mm -hmm. He's got at least five guitars. He's got uh, like three drum sets. Yeah, and then he's got really good microphones to record it all with. And then whether or not he's a pirate. <laughs> He's got audio software. Yeah. Which, if the Mixcraft 7 lady has taught me anything, 
It's the same price as most video games, and you'll never get bored. Okay. I have... I've been using the same trial version of Mixcraft 7 for about nine years, and it was a 30-day trial, and... Okay. So I've basically invented a way to continue to use the software because it'll let me, but not do anything on it. Okay. So, Mixcraft has a lot of really, really good MIDI making, editing, and instrumental tools. Yeah. You're just not allowed to use a lot of them whenever the trial is over but you can still totally look at them and still totally edit pre-existing midis with them weird so if you had a midi that existed before the trial ran out oh no or you can make one and throw it in there because you can still edit you can still throw new midis in oh okay so i just make midis on like uh like basically <laughs> a seven year old file <laughs> What I do is, like, I'll make a MIDI separately, mm -hmm. like, in a different program that's, like, an open-source MIDI editor. Mm -hmm. I'll just take them, because I'll, I'll do, like, one track at a time. I'll take them and throw them into Mixcraft. I then change the instruments on them and change the tempo, then I add the effects. Yeah. And then once the trial message is over, where they just tell me about how cheap it is Shh. and I should buy it, I open up Audacity, uh -huh. and I record my desktop audio, and I just play the song. <laughs> <laughs> that's a way to do it. I've been getting away with this for a long time. Oh, finally. Has it been at the cost of slight quality? Oh, absolutely. Do I make music enough for that to matter? Nope. The only time it mattered, it doesn't matter because I I did have I did make a vinyl. Like I've had some of my music pressed to vinyl. Uh-huh. But on the no! songs Oh no. Ah. <laughs> uh... On the songs I've had pressed to vinyl, I haven't actually bothered to... Oh, well, like, I, I hired a guy. Mm -hmm. uh, like, the guy that pressed my stuff to vinyl, I hired that company to, like, uncompress it before they got pushed to vinyl. Like, I wanted them to remaster it, basically. Okay. I wanted them to master it for vinyl so it would sound good on the, pl on the platform. Mm -hmm. Which it does. It, it sounds way better on vinyl than it does on my computer because it's a different song, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we should do that. We should uh, we should get you, me, and Lane once all three of us have got our instruments of choice. And yep. we should record songs and release Freethinker Association vinyls. <laughs> yes! If you want to learn more about you vinyls know. and the way the vinyl ecosystem works, check out our previous episode, the New Year's special, to learn more from the music master himself, Lane Pittman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we didn't we we knew significantly less. Well, like, I think all three of us have gone to college for a different form of art. Yeah. So, my art is not art your art is art and lane's art is music yeah i like food i mm -hmm. went for culinary arts which is technically an art but i can eat it i really like culinary culinary is fun <sighs> no. what a fucking horrendous jump it's you a, kick your mother with those legs it's an annoying jump to make that and was... that is a dumb you, uh, you reap what you sow. <laughs> just going backwards, man. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to use the excuse. It's hard to play while talking. Yep, sure is an excuse, buddy. Nice jump. Well, good job getting to that platform. Fuck. <laughs> just wait. You're going to pop off eventually. Yeah, one. I'll pop off, and at some point, so they're going to be seeing you. Even if it's not on this podcast, they'll see you in uh, your streams. They'll be see you doing the same shit. Nah, I won't fail. Bet. Yeah, I have to play the game first. <laughs> I never promised I'd play the game. I just said I want to because it looks fun. You didn't even jump. You just walked. <laughs> I I just pushed it too late. Is the uh, hitbox for the dudes awkward? 
It's like it's not completely yeah, it's his like body. A, it's it's like slightly a square, off. A little off of him. Yeah. I would be so horrible at this game. I'm so glad I get to heckle from the sidelines. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think I'm okay. Really? I wouldn't say so. Uh, actually, <laughs> yes. People, you, I've seen uh, videos of people who've been struggling for longer than I have. I know it was a joke. I wouldn't consider you terrible. I wouldn't yeah. even consider you bad. Shit! All right, I, it was well. a fraction. Of a second too slow. Nope, that almost. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go back. All right, maybe I would. <laughs> no, that's just how this game works. I messed up two jumps and that's it. That Now I'm back here. Oh, so I know we were talking about our thinkies uh, not that long ago. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the industry itself has a worstie of this year. It does. The industry itself has deemed Balan Wonder World the worst game to be released for the Switch in 2021. Uh, I haven't is... played it, but I'd have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's fair. Uh, it isn't. It isn't at all. But it looked. I. It didn't look fun to me. There were worse games on the Switch. I think that released this year. Calculator released this year. So did Popeye. Uh, I don't know about Popeye, but Calculator is a functioning thing that does what it wants. Popeye... I wouldn't necessarily say it's fun. Popeye is made by the same people who made Calculator. Okay. <laughs> to, to give you uh, a little bit of perspective. All right. It basically doesn't Shit. work. It doesn't? I mean, no. It's all... All the 3D models don't animate. The game was no shit completely modeled in Google SketchUp. Is this for Balan or, uh... No. No. <laughs> no. I'm talking about Popeye. Okay, I, could, I didn't know. No, Balan Wonderworld doesn't look that bad. Yeah, I... It's hard to tell. <laughs> Balan Wonderworld looks good. Have I said Wonderland or Wonderworld up to this point? <sighs> Fuck if I know. I mix them up. I mix them up all the time. I accept both as being correct. Shit. Wonder World is just such a bad name. Yeah. I wanted it to be Wonderland. Yeah, because it makes sense. Uh huh. But it's Wonder World. And that doesn't sound good. Nope. I'm so sad for who made this. Did you? Did Yuji Naka make this? I think it was right. You said it was the same person who made Billy. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. And Sonic. Yeah. So it is it is a new Yuji Naka. Okay. Okay, so yeah, Yuji Naka retired from Square immediately. And retired from Square meaning he was probably, like, fired. After this game? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's sad. They, they were so prepared for this to be a thing, and then Square didn't let them make a game. Is that what happened? Kinda. So, like, Square really likes it when their games have stories because they're Square Enix. Yeah. That's kind of their thing. Yeah, that and makes Yuji sense. Naka That's was fair. like, I don't actually want to put a story in the game. And then Square was like, you have to. And Yuji was like, um, I can't. And oh. they were like, yes, you can. And then, like, no one really made him. No one made him make it have a story? But, like, they did. It was, like, he was heavily pressured into doing shit he didn't want to do. Yeah. And this game suffers from Yuji Naka Syndrome super hard. And then it has a lot of problems on top of that. Yuji Naka Syndrome was pu putting everything on one button. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's a problem with the Dreamcast Sonic games. It's a problem with most Sonic games. Where it's, like, quite literally every action. And there's 15, I think, in Sonic Adventure 1. That are bound to a singular button. Damn. Like, it's ridiculous. You got fucking eight buttons on your controller, but only three of them get used. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you should use those buttons, man. I guess four. But if you want to consider the triggers. But. Yeah, it's. 
I don't understand why I, he's all about accessibility, but the way he does accessibility is by making everything super simple. And by super simple, he means a billion mechanics that are all completely different, but I'll share one, but... <laughs> That's not simple at all. No, it isn't. This but... game is simple. There's one button, but it only does one thing. So that's actually the design philosophy of Balan Wonderworld. Okay. There is one button that does one thing. That is your only button. Nothing else does anything. All right. And there are costumes that change you, that change what your one button does. I see. Oh, bitch. Now, with a little bit of thought, you may be able to find the problem with a 3D platformer that occasionally takes away your jump button. Yeah. <laughs> like... It's, uh... Yeah. No. Nope, that's over. I'm wait. I'm fucked. I'm dead. I'm terrible. <laughs> Balan is just... Balan's a sad game. Because, like, if it's your first 3D platformer, it's honestly a pretty good introduction to 3D platformers. Yeah. It's really <sighs> slow. It's really safe. It's really... <sighs> I don't know, I'm running out of positive things to say. But, but like, yeah. it's not offensive, per se. You won't know something's wrong if it's your first one. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's nothing too terrible about it outwardly. It's just really fucking boring if you have any sense of uh, 3D platformer experience. Okay. There is a speedrun for it. There is a speedrun for it. Yeah. It's decimated by my good friend Chiron, I believe. I don't know. I haven't checked since he was yeah. running. What? I don't know. I don't know if there will ever be a game I decide to speedrun. I love speedrunning. Yeah, Chiron still has the world record to go. World record. He got it eight months ago. That's quite a while. It was. It is one fourteen thirty-two. Okay. There was a run two months ago that was really going for world record. It got 118.31, so they're still still pretty far off. There was a PlayStation 5 run eight months ago. Damn. That You bought a PS5 and got that game? You got... Okay, let's talk about all the factors here. You got a PlayStation 5 to play Battle and Wonder World at a competitive level. Yeah. You were so proud of your time on your PlayStation 5 that you uploaded it to speedrun.com for third place out of eight. That's not a lot. That's not great. Yeah. Yeah, Balan has such good art, which is so sad because this game sucks so much ass. Does it have a Discord? Like, actually? Oh, the... For speedrun? Yeah. Is there a, Shit. Is there a Balan... Shit! Fuck! I don't want to be back here. Oh my god, there's a Balan Wonderworld speedrun Discord. Are, are all eight people in it? 44 people are in this one, actually. There's only eight runs. There is... Let's check overall. There's 10 players with 36 runs overall on 29 followers. Okay. How does the Discord have more people in it than amount of runs? Uh, yeah. To be fair, I almost joined it and then made the problem worse. So, yeah. What a what a mess. What a what a disgusting mess. Yeah, my good friend Kyron ran uh, Balan for a while. Shit. He runs a bunch of games. Most notably, he is a former world record holder at Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, mm. only being usurped a month ago by Monkey SMB, who really went on a giant grind and just. It seemed like. For a good, like, four or five months or so, Monkey just decided he was going to rule Billy and just played every day until he got every record in every category and every level. Damn. Okay. 
He bopped every individual level speedrun in the entire game. Damn. Even the ones one frame from Task Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so... He currently has the world record by nine seconds. That's a lot. For Billy? Uh, well, maybe not as much for Billy. It's pretty big for Billy now. Is it? Yeah. We've broken the... F We've broken what I would consider the second to final minute barrier left okay. without a new strategy. I think the fastest conceivable time a human can get in Billy is like a 102. Okay. And right now it's the world records are at low 104s. I see. It, and yeah, they're close. It might be theoretically possible to get sub hour if we have someone willing to use shit like Anchorless in a real run. Yeah. Wither Gambit and Anchorless would have to be meta for sub hour. Mm hmm. And I've heard talks of people saying that Wither Gambit isn't faster, but I have timed it myself now, and it is exactly one second faster. Especially if you set up into Flower Skip immediately, it can be up to two seconds faster. Yep. Yeah. So Wither Gambit, Wither Gambit's the way. Okay. Yeah, use the use the uh, thing that uh, Tyler made. Use it. I'm, I've fallen off plus L plus ratio now. My PB is so bad. I've been bopped by so many people. Damn. So sad. It's been so long since I ran that there's a two-year-old run higher than me. <laughs> Okay. I used to be in the top 15. Now I'm number 24. Yeah. L. What a good game. I like Billy a lot. Awesome. Oh yeah, we have an emulator category now. Do you? Yeah. I'm like last place on it, which is weird because... I don't know. It's not really that weird, I guess. But... I didn't know they still had my emulator runs documented just to put me on the board and last. Because that board <laughs> didn't exist when I started running. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I, I almost feel like going back and getting a good emulator run just to say fuck you. Also, yeah. that's so sad. Emulator world record is like 11th on the console records. Damn. Emulator world record is 111. It was done nine months ago. Okay. Yes. Crow. Ah, uh, whatever. I got the crow. Or raven. Whatever the fuck he is. Oh, but I'm back here. Seems like it was a pretty solid run. Like, yeah. I wish emulator wasn't on a separate leaderboard, but I get why it is. Mm hmm. Oh my god. There's actually people who have done Eggmaster emulated. Eggmaster? 100. Oh. Eggmaster is so much faster than it used to be. Is it? The world record on console is 6 hours and 26 minutes, which is inconceivably fast. Yeah. IMO. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Cons emulator world record is 7 hours and 23 minutes. Okay. Which is also stupid fast. I remember when this category was, like, theorized to be in the 20s. <laughs> like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, like, a new category that's being worked on that, like, isn't on the leaderboard yet, but, like, is kind of taken seriously. Oh? What's the category? Uh, 56 emblems or something like that. 100% no S ranks. Oh, okay. Because that's one of the one of the big things that fucks over 100% is having to go back and do every level multiple times to guarantee S ranks on every level when ranking in this game is super inconsistent. Yeah. You still have to go get every egg. You still have to go, I, th I think. Yeah, yeah, you have to get every egg. You have to go get every egg. Oh, but you I just, was... You got fucked. I was... No! You got so boned. Uh, I, I got so annoyed by that, I fucked it the next jump up. That's, that's sad. <laughs> Whatever, I'm back. Yeah, you have to hatch every egg, you have to grab every gold coin, and you have to beat every level. 
So okay. it's basically all levels plus, yeah. really. It's 100% without the extra grinding. That sounds like a more fun category than 100%. Yeah, 100 is still what some people run. Not very many, but some. Yeah. My all levels time isn't last place anymore. Oh. Someone got an hour slower than me. Yeah. Someone didn't. Someone bothered to upload a run just to make me feel better. Yeah. Their all levels run is four hours, forty-seven minutes, and twenty-nine seconds. What do they have to say for themselves? Yep. Literally nothing. They did not say anything. And is this emulated? It looks like it, but I guess it isn't. Uh, Who is can this? Can I get in here? Let me check this guy's profile, cause I, if he's if he's ran anything else. It doesn't look like it. Apparently, this is a sunshine. What? What? Oh my god! What? What? So this guy, who is in last place on all levels in Billy Hatcher, uh huh, has every single world record in Monkey Ball One. Okay. Every level, every difficulty, every category, everything. Damn. He has at least 30 records in in, in uh, one. That's a lot. Only one category is he second, and that is master, normal, with pausing enabled. Okay. This guy is insane. No, no shot. He's first place everywhere in Mario Kart Wii. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. He has no. Oh no. Oh, okay. I can take this. I thought I'd fall way more. Multiple records in Mario Kart Wii. Fifth place in Super Mario 64 DS. Fourth place in Mario Sunshine 60 Shines. Third place in New Game Plus All Blue Coins. This guy does a lot of runs. Yeah, third place in Fast Any Percent Standard for, for Super Mario Sunshine Arcade 2, which I've never heard of in my life. He's first place in it. Okay. Let me check and see how many people actually run that. Okay, two people. Yeah, all right. Congratulations, bucko. Yeah, what is Arcade? No idea. I'll look at it later. Oh, right. He's first place in a bunch of uh, Monkey Ball ROM hacks. He's pretty good at Monkey Ball 2, but not nearly as good at Monkey <sighs> Ball 1. Okay. He's first place in a bunch of stuff for Super Monkey Ball Adventure. Okay. Seventh place for Mario Maker 2 in story mode. All right. Which is a actually somewhat competitive category. Shit, how am I supposed to get that? This is not what I expected to look at today. Yeah. Not at all. This is just a guy who really likes Monkey Ball, who grinds a bunch of random world records, and then sometimes jobs out on games just to give other people better numbers. Yeah. That's funny. I can respect that, because I'm very oh, similar myself. no. This isn't good. Never mind. I'm fine. Like My next Crackdown 2 run is like guaranteed to world record at any percent New Game Plus. Which is the really, really the last category I need. Yeah. So I'll have a clean sweep across Crackdown 2 pretty soon. Nice. Just need to get some people for co-op. And once I, once I get the co-op world records, I'm actually done with the game. Because no one will ever contest me. <laughs> Alright. Except maybe you at home. If you at home have an Xbox lying around, guess what? Crackdown 1 and 2 are both free. Run them. They're fun. Yeah. Play the game. He likes them. Crackdown, Crackdown's a good series. Except for the third one. They really fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the thanks for the free content, jcool114. Yeah, you really helped out today. Yeah, where am I going? I guess I need to get to the left. Yeah, so is there anything that you'd like to talk about today, Cameron? Hmm. I'm farther than I've been ever before right now. That's nice. Yeah. So this is all new shit to me. 
then I can, yeah. We. Oh shit. Eh. What a what a dastardly jump. Eh. Eh. No. <laughs> what a dastardly <laughs> jump. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Have you watched any new anime recently? Uh, I don't. I actually haven't. Though I will be soon, since the fall anime season just ended. So, uh, there'll be a couple from those I'll watch. I'll watch, uh, fuck, what? Why can't I remember their names? I'm blanking. You're blanking? Yeah. What? Day 187. Well, I haven't taken that long. It appears my journey is at its end. It seems it was not meant to be me, after all. For so long, I believed. But when I reached that place, there was nothing I could do. Perhaps this... I can find some place to stay back in Bogtown. Bogtown? I wonder if they will believe me. So you're going to get to a point past Bogtown where you're going to be like, Oh, that's what the fucking book meant. I don't know where... I haven't seen Bogtown. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're going to reach Bogtown, that's going to be like a fucking omen. <laughs> Once you pass that, yeah. it's going to be some shit. Apparently. Yeah, because right now I'm in the Great Frontier. Uh, nope, now I'm in Bargainburg. <laughs> you almost weren't. <laughs> yeah, almost. Oh, there, oh we go. there we go. We're back down to <laughs> False, False King's Keep. Keep. Uh, but I, I love this part of the game. I was talking about a lot of stuff last time we were here. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Spamton. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can make it back with decent time. So I did see something else today that uh -huh. was pretty interesting. Yeah. I've been complaining about Switch hardware for a long time. It looks like this will uh, cure my woes and help me get strong arms. Of course. <laughs> Oh, I'm talking about the up switch Orion up switch Orion the up switch Orion. I this oh. is the switch XXXL What the fuck? It is a gigantic screen that puts your switch into docked mode and then lets you slide joy cons on it and lets you use a giant monitor for your switch Okay because your Switch... I agree. I think the Switch's screen could be a little bit bigger. Does it need to be four times bigger at one-eighth the quality? No. No. But it could use a little bit of a bigger screen, yeah. Actually, if we were to, like, either do, like... I think, preferably, if they were to, like, change the screen, I would just... A better screen. That has a better uh, resolution quality than necessarily a one that's bigger. Well, that's what the OLED switch is. Yeah. They already made that. They did, but because it's only OLED, that's not enough. I mean, is it not? Not for me. It's not gonna make me buy a new switch. But like, it runs at a slightly higher resolution than the base switch, just is not docked. Yeah. Like, Whatever. Rumor has it 2023 Nintendo's new hardware is going to go out and it's going to be comparable to like it's going to be slightly stronger than the PS4 Pro so it's going to be able to run essentially basically every game on the market. It's going to be able, yeah. It's going to be essentially a gimped PS5 which means that anything that's going to run on a mid-range PC will run on it. Yeah. Which means that it'll actually be a fucking comparable device to get. Yeah, though, if it's portable, I'm fine with it yeah, being it will weaker. Be. From as far as I know, yeah. it will be. If it's still portable, I'm perfectly fine with it being weaker. Listen, I actually wasn't going to complain about this, even if it wasn't portable, because holy shit, a Nintendo platform with anything comparable is fine. Like, yeah. even if they decided to make it exclusively a home console, or they made it a portable-ish console, like the GameCube again, mm -hmm. like, I'd be fine with that. I wouldn't yeah. mind. I just want a Nintendo console that doesn't suck dog balls. I wouldn't say the Switch sucks dog balls. I would. This game, this fucking system can't run shit. 
and run a fair number of things. It ran Doom 2016. If did it run Doom 2016 or did it walk Doom 2016? Because <laughs> I remember it walking and not very well, especially in multiplayer. Oh my god, mm. Doom 2016 multiplayer on Switch was borderline unplayable. I didn't do the multiplayer, so I didn't. I don't know anything about. Side note on that weird tangent. Mm -hmm. I really like Doom 2016 multiplayer. Okay. I wish it wasn't dead. It's actually really fun. Okay. It it reminds me a lot of, ironically, Halo. Mm -hmm. It's it's arena esque, without yeah. actually being an arena shooter. Like, I don't know. I think that Doom Eternal really missed out by not having a uh, similar multiplayer mode to Doom 2016. Because I think okay. Doom 2016's multiplayer could have been a genuinely good esport. All right. It was just, it's really fun. It was really, really fun. I, I prestiged in it like nine times. That's why okay. I have so many hours in Doom 2016. I've got like 4,000 hours across multiple platforms all put together. Okay. And almost all of that's the multiplayer. Just really, really fun. Lots of customization options on both the weapons and on your armor. Fuck. Funny emotes like dabbing. Mm -hmm. Like it just it just just a really good complete package. I know a lot of people get a lot of people didn't really care too much about it. You could tell because the highest level you would ever run into was someone that was like level four. Alright. But the maps were all well made, the pickup system was good. I don't know, Doom 2016 multiplayer just it's got a it's got a soft spot in my heart. I really liked it and I would Shit. go back and play more of it if there was people to play it with, but like if I look up Ooh. Steam charts, yeah. They go up to Steam charts of Doom 2016. Damn it. Right it's now, screwed, man. there are 522 people playing Doom and that's not multiplayer. That's yeah. just people with the game open. I guarantee you there's less than 200 people inside of the multiplayer right now. Which, to be fair, is more than Quake Live. <laughs> yeah. It's more than Quake Live. But... Hey, maybe you can boot up Doom 2016 and play the multiplayer. The game is MSRP for $6. So if you're hearing this and don't own it, just fucking buy it and play it. Yeah. If you somehow haven't played Doom 2016 in the year of our Lord 2022, just fucking play it already. Okay. It doesn't matter what platform you have it on. Don't buy it on Switch if you can if you can av avoid it. It's definitely the worst play to, way to play it. It's playable now. They've patched it three or, four or so times with giant optimization updates each time to make it at least tolerable. It runs at like a solid 24 FPS now consistently. And I don't, I don't think it was running poorly when I played it. Oh, that's a that's not a good looking game on Switch, dude. It's it's it was struggling to hit 20. Now it's now it's locked at 24, I'm pretty sure. Okay. But that locked at 24 has done dividends for it. It's much more playable than it used to be. And the added motion controls did a lot for the game too. All right. But if you have to buy the game on Switch, it's still worth buying. It's still worth playing. But if you're watching this video, that means you have a way to use Google Stadia. And you should just buy it on Stadia instead, honestly. <laughs> like, the Google Stadia version of the game is so much better than the Switch version of the game. And you don't have to... You, would, you will quite literally never be able to play multiplayer if you play on Stadia. Mm -hmm. There's a way that they wouldn't be able to do Stadia, I think. You can play Stadia on the Switch. Phone. Oh, yes. You can play Stadia on the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anything that can run Google Chrome or YouTube can play Stadia. Okay. I, uh, I was actually taking screenshots of the touchscreen interface for Doom 2016 yesterday. All right. So this is, this is a very relevant thing for me, actually. I just looked at this. Fuck. Would I want to play Doom 2016 on touchscreen? Absolutely not. But you can connect literally any Bluetooth controller to your phone and then just play it like that. Shit.
But yeah, anyway, back to the initial topic of the Upswitch Oregon review. Yeah. Nintendo Life put this out, and I had never seen this before. Apparently they went hands-on with it, and this thing is a clusterfuck. I'm just going to read their review outright. Okay. The first and most obvious issue we've encountered is that the unit with the when the switch is attached is really heavy. So heavy, in fact, that it is uncomfortable to hold. Okay. Which is a bit of a shortcoming when this is being pilled as a portable solution. And this is before we factored in the additional weight of a battery pack that you would need. The company did not send us a pack with the review sample. You need a power cell that provides enough oomph to not only juice up the screen, but also the switch in docked mode. One can only guess at how arm-achingly heavy the combined system becomes at this stage. Yeah. Next up is the fact that the screen itself isn't a 1080p panel as advertised, but a 768p panel, which our video guru Alex believes was intended to be put inside another device, like a shitty laptop. Really? It's some. It's a screen that you put into another screen? No, like, it was... This screen was clearly not meant to be used for this. Like, this was a, a screen that was designed to be used with something like a budget laptop. This was not meant to be used for this product at all. This is probably okay. this company making this out of something they already had laying around. I see. Uh, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be in the new area. Wow. And apparently the screen is more dull than the base switch. Which is kind of saying a lot, because that screen is not good. Okay. The only situation we could even remotely see this device being useful for is tabletop mode. As it means what you've got a, the fuck was that? As it means you've got a bigger screen to look at when you're playing with friends. The problem here is that if you're looking for a portable solution of this kind, you might as well buy one of the many, many 1080p portable monitors that are on the market, almost all of which are true HD and not $300. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, I bought a really nice HDR 1080p portable monitor, which I had no clue was going to be half as nice as it actually is. Oh, back here, to the colossal drain. Yeah. I had no idea that that monitor was going to be nearly as good as it is, and I bought that thing for fucking eighty dollars. Yeah. Fuck. There we go. You definitely don't want to send a review copy to a publication that's known for being super positive and stuff they receive and be given a miss from them. Yeah. You don't want that. You don't want that. This thing must be the dog's shit. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No. <laughs> Triple A Clock has just been ranked alongside Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shin Megami Tensei 5 in the new most played section of the United States eShop, where you'll find apps with the average longest playing time in the past two weeks. Okay. Neat. Just after Christmas, there will be another great opportunity to download Triple A Clock, the first and only watch for Nintendo Switch. RedDeer.Games is excited to announce that on December 27th, three DLCs and a deluxe edition will be released in America and Europe. For a clock? For a clock. Yeah. First off, uh, I got a couple questions. The Switch has an internal <laughs> clock. It has an internal clock. Yeah, press the home button. It's right there. Yeah, right there. It's right there. Right there. It's got a clock. It's right there, and somehow they had to purchase a clock on for the Switch that people are using. Yeah, that people are using. <laughs> And then there's, they're gonna have 
paid add-ons? Yep. What is so exceptional about this clock? It's a good thing you asked, because there is a blurb that basically asks that question word for word. <laughs> Imagine such a situation. It's December 31st, 2021. Yeah. Your house party is in full swing, and all of your friends are having a great time. It's approaching midnight. So you grab your switch, swing your hand high up, and with the all-new AAA clock on, start the countdown. The evening couldn't have been more enjoyable. What a better way to measure New Year's Eve until midnight than by AAA clock. I guess. If you're that addicted to the Switch that you need to use the Switch to tell you that it's New Year's and not, you know, the uh, news that's always done the ball drops. Yeah. <laughs> Triple A uh, clock left some of us scratching our heads when it launched on Switch earlier this year, but publisher Red Deer Dot Games is clearly on to a winner here, as the company has just launched a deluxe edition of the timekeeping app, along with three new clock faces, one of which is based on the hit Netflix TV series Squid Game. Of course it is. That's free money, based yeah. it off of Squid Game. Red Deer Games says the new faces are a direct result of the feedback received from the launch of the base app back in October, as users have been saying they got bored of looking at the same clock face. What world do we live in where people have given genuine feedback to the fucking clock guy saying, I've looked at this one for so long that I'm bored of it. Can I please get a squid game how, clock? How boring is your life that you need a clock face that changes like i get it if you have a watch like if you have an apple watch or like a samsung watch you can change the faces on those yeah i understand that this is a video game console yeah what the fuck is this for this won't be on 24 7 the squid game themed clock design squid clock all right. Comes Squid free clock. with a deluxe edition and is, according to the publisher, inspired by a popular TV series, which is Red Deer Games' way of referencing the connection without actually saying it explicitly. Yeah, because if they said it explicitly, they could be sued. Probably. The other two DLC clocks are paid for items. One has a planet-like design spin clock, while the other is based on Cyber Patrol. Cyber Clock. Cyber Patrol. There is no word on whether or not... Okay, well, this is an article that got updated. Cause... No shot, this is selling this well. Like... Motherfucker! On... Fucker! I don't want to be back at the bottom of Bargainburg. If I check the Switch bestsellers, am I gonna fucking find AAA Clock? No, I just looked at it. It shouldn't be there. Okay. Jump Force is up there. It it was twelve forty five or something recently, right? What the hell? How do I check like? Which I actually did end up picking it up because I was curious, especially since they're taking it off of the yeah. Uh, e they're no longer making it. So. Yeah. So if you want it, uh, you should pick it up before February 2022, because that'll be it. Does the eShop have a most played section? Not a most played. It is bestsellers. It doesn't have a most played section. Can you check real quick? Because Nintendo Life says it got added recently. I've... No, I don't want it. No, not, not Ollie. Go back. Ollie is our... Uh... For the uh, NES Monopoly, he was the calm we had. Oh, that's, that's so, so for true. those listening. That's why there's one named Ollie. Best sellers coming soon. Yeah, I don't see most played. Yeah, like great deals, of which there has been a lot added. Holy, it's gone up. What was it like 600 last week? Okay. Nintendo Switch eShop's most played section allows users to see what games are trending in their region. 
The new tab is updated with titles which have garnered the most play time over the next two weeks. There's a new feature on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Most played... But where is it? This was recently updated on December 6th. You know what fucking wasn't? I, I literally... Maybe it's a part of a section in a section? Do you have a United States account? Yeah. Like... I have a U.S. account. That's what this is. This is my main account. I don't know where it is. Because multiple publications say that there's, like, a new tab. But they're I, liars. I don't see it. Hold on. Maybe this has a way to get to it. Wait, they totally do. What the fuck? Okay, it's so it's featured. In, yeah, that's where I'm scrolling down right now. But, like, it's super recent <laughs> here? It's well, not at the bottom. Is it supposed to be at the bottom? Um. No. What no, is going no, on? No. Why, why is there, like... Two times okay. gold points, Indie World... It's not here. What is going on? Maybe it's incoming soon. No, I've already... I guess. Fine, let's check. Because that says pre-order right there. Pawn of the Dead. It's another chess clone. <laughs> that it is. All right, well... Apparently, it's this... not here. I'm just gonna go back to Jump King. Yeah, it's definitely not here. Just go back to Jump King. Wait, Windjammers two. When does that come out? Uh, what up? So we let me scroll past it. Yeah, uh, January, January 20th. I know what we're doing on January 20th. All right. Yeah. Super not here. All right. Awesome. Glad that I wasted all of our fucking time. Yeah. Like back to the interesting game. <laughs> At the top of the charts in most regions right now, you've got Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Desigia 6, Football Manager 2022 Touch, Shimigansei, Shimigami Tensei 5, and the AAA Clock app. Okay. Fucking okay. Well, whatever. Everyone in the world is saying the AAA Clock app is like the number one most played thing in the world that's not a video game. So clearly they know something that I don't because I wouldn't have put a clock on the Switch. Yeah. Same. <laughs> but I also wouldn't have invested in Bitcoin years ago. I also wouldn't have uh, put a calculator on the Switch. Motherfucker. But you know Neither what? Neither of us are millionaires. Yeah. So, so clearly what you should do to become a millionaire is don't do what we do. Find the dumbest possible angle you can take to make money. And do just it. do that. Yep. Right. What? Hour 17? sure that's what it looks like to me yeah that might be about right oh yeah i did have something i wanted to bitch about uh-huh so let's go on a little journey through our mind palaces together shall we okay all right so imagine this with me you're an indie video game developer oh no i know very scary Oh, Being an indie no. video game developer, horrifying. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, imagine you're an indie video Did game developer. Did it die? I think my controller died, yeah. <laughs> Give me a second, I'll be right back. I got batteries. Okay. So, you're an indie video game developer. You spend so much of your life planning out what you're going to do, but you can't quite figure it out. Then one day you meet up with your family to enjoy a family game night. And then boom, it hits you. You're going to make some board games. But you're not going to make just any board games. You're going to make brand new board games. And you're going to make them video games. Okay. You're going to make a compilation of new board games into a video game. All right. This is a good <sighs> idea. I think this is a good idea. I would purchase this. But here's the thing. If you are going to make board games that are also a video game, what should you do? 
Should you A, take advantage of the medium that you've chosen and make your boards interesting and maybe make things that couldn't potentially happen in a real board game, or B, make the most uninspired, terrible, non-board ever, make it graphically ugly, make there be nothing on screen, and make your games all suck. <laughs> I, I guess I can see why you want to complain. Oink Games has pissed me off for the first and last time. Oh, there's a dude. There is a dude. Looks like Oro from Street Fighter 3. No. Nice jump. No. no. I don't want to I don't want to make this jump again. But like I love board games. No. I've been really wanting to get Tabletop Simulator because I think that'd be a lot of fun because I like board games and I like playing them with people that I enjoy spending company with. Yeah. I don't think I could subject my friends to oink video games. Yeah. Because that is... It is board games that don't have boards and are hardly games. Okay. They literally don't have boards. Like, it's a board game that takes place with cards and, like, pieces on a gradient. On a gradient? Yeah, like it's, the, like, it's supposed to just be a big table that you can't see the edges of, but it's just a solid blue or pink gradient. Ah, lame. It's like, you could make fucking Monopoly like this and I wouldn't play it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love Monopoly. I love most board games, really, that I've played. But I don't, I can't fucking stand. This is just pieces. It's just bad looking pieces. Mm -hmm. Just triangles and hexagons. I mean, on a look gradient. at the millions of chess clones. There's some that look like shit. But then there's the ones that, like, put you in a coffee house and yeah. really try to immerse you in it. And which of these to sell? The ones that put you in a coffee house. Exactly. Like, Clubhouse Games wasn't a success as a joke clubhouse yeah. games was a game where they sold us really pretty board games that worked online and everyone shit their fucking pants yeah because that's awesome <laughs> yeah online board games is sick people like board games people like small competitive things like that just make it visually interesting because like if Monopoly was ugly, no one would play it. I know this is true, because Scott Wozniak can't sell Monopoly because his face doesn't look right. <laughs> like, that's not nice. No. But like, that's not Shit, even which true. Direction? The, the Scott it's the left. Wise Monopoly set sold out really fast. Ah, uh, did it? Yeah, this was just a mean-spirited joke for no reason. I'm sorry, Scott. You'll never watch this, but if you do, oopsie. Um... <laughs> You have pissed him off for the last time. I hope so. I don't want to make someone mad on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I also like 3D Dot Game Heroes, so we're probably cool. Okay. But like... Anyway, ugly Monopoly games don't sell. Which yeah. is why like Monopoly Cheaters Edition didn't do well, I think. I don't know. But like... Ugly board games don't do well, TLDR. Yeah. Ugly games and complicated games. Unless you are an ugly and complicated game, because Risk does really well. Yeah. That's. I think that's just uh, because Risk was the real-time RTS uh, before RTSs existed. Yeah, Risk is very RTS-y. Is Risk the inspiration for a lot of RTSs? That would make sense. It might be. I have no clue. I've never looked into it. I'm not an RTS guy. Yeah, neither am I. RTS, more like really stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. I don't know. Uh, real time strategy. So, what, what the hell starts with T? Torture. Real torture speedos. <laughs> That's all of them for me. 
<laughs> like what? Like on other people or on you? On other. Well, yeah, on everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I don't like speedos. Why don't you like speedos? I think they're weird. <laughs> but they're just what? What? What do you mean speedos they, are weird? They show off too much. It's just underwear. Yeah, I wouldn't wear underwear that like that. I mean, like. I wear the underwear that's more like swim trunks. I mean, there are some speedos that are like really showy per se, yeah. But like, there's some speedos that I, I guess are uh, maybe closer to boxers. Fellow jumper, how unusual! Friend, this is the end of the road for us. You are giving up for me? Fuck you! <laughs> Just wait until you see what is ahead. I will wait here. Ah, <laughs> oh, bitch. Okay. You're fucked. Oh. Oh, I can't. Well, whatever. I'm f no. <laughs> oh my god, this is the furthest down we've been in a while. Ah, oh, I didn't want to do that. That was a bad decision. I like when you get slightly irritated and then everything just falls apart immediately. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep your cool, otherwise this game fucking ends. Yeah, so I guess I got a couple more things to talk about too, like how uh, Sega was almost the ones to publish Pokemon. Almost. Yeah. Neat. Like, I can't remember the exact thing. I do know I saw this recently on Nintendo Life as well. Mm -hmm. But like, one of the guys that like founded Game Freak, or like one of the people that was like early on the Pokemon project, like the guy who made like made the IP or whatever, mm -hmm. was working on Sega's TV game idea contest. Yeah. And uh, Sega was working with him on something else. I don't remember exactly what it was, but TLDR. The guy who made Pokemon had a really close relationship with Sega and mm -hmm. even had the IP and gave it to Sega occasionally, which has led to Sega publishing some Pokemon things later. But I see. <sighs> had he stuck with Sega longer, he probably would have ended up putting Pokemon on the game uh, on the game gear. Neat. I wonder how drastically that would have changed, you know, the course of video game history. I don't know. It's possible that no Pokemon games would have uh just transferred into to Nintendo and kept the way they were. Like, like Nintendo would have never got the rights? Nintendo wouldn't have gotten the rights, but they'd be publishing it on Nintendo consoles. Okay, but like Sega might not have died if Pokemon was like one Maybe. of their flagship IPs. Maybe. Like if they had ownership of, over Game Freak the same way Nintendo does, then Sega might have just stayed in the portable market. Because Pokemon, I think, it, as an IP, cannot fail. Even if it was on something like the Game Gear, I genuinely think that the game, honestly, the Game Gear might have been better for Pokemon, because I don't the, know. as a console, the Game Gear is way more equipped to handle something like that. They, they they wouldn't have had to compromise with the original versions of the game, and they could have released like the first two generations as the first game. It would have yeah. been, it would have totally changed the way that Pokemon was developed. Mm -hmm. Plus, it would have been in color from the start. Yeah. Just an interesting concept, honestly. Interesting thing, thought experiment. Mm -hmm. Thinking about what that would have done. Sega would probably be pushing more innovation in handhelds, which would lead to... I don't know. I, I wonder if they would be still doing stuff constantly. I don't know. And it's weird... possible that, regardless, Sega would screw themselves over with consoles and abandon it still. I think so. I think you're definitely right. But, like, I'm wondering how it would have happened. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they would have actually gotten out of the hardware industry in this case, though. I think they would have. what they might have done is they might have... I don't know. If they were... The problem with Sega was they had too many resources and too many hands and uh -huh. not enough to work on. So, if they, uh... Shit. If they had a portable division that stayed a portable division, they might have actually not made the Saturn. 
which would have saved the company. <laughs> yeah. The Dreamcast's giant failure comes almost entirely because of the Saturn and the 32X. So if... Would the CD have even existed? I don't know. Say in this hypothetical scenario that Sega never released any of the attachments for the Genesis and never released the, uh, the Saturn because they were focusing more on h hardware, like consoles or portable hardware. Mm -hmm. They might have put out like four different Game Gears by this point in time, but I don't think that's a bad thing, unlike it was for consoles. Yeah. I think if, if Sega put out a new handheld every year, like a phone almost... This way. As long as the link cable still worked between them, which Sega was really good with backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. uh, shit, as long as the they could still like work with uh, newer, older games. I, I don't know how it would work exactly, but like every like three generations, you need to upgrade or something like that. Mm -hmm. So like the the handheld would, would be out, we'd be like outdated in three years. But as long as the new ones continue to support legacy hardware and they would still be able to link together, maybe Pokemon could have been even bigger and Sega would be a much more... Bigger? That They're already oh, massive. They're already the biggest multimedia franchise in the world. I know. Yeah. But if they were on... If they were pushed to make yearly releases back in the 90s... And they had the hardware and team to do it, which they would have done. It would have completely changed the way that the franchise is seen today. I also think it might have helped it grow. It would either do one. It would do one of two things: either diminish the sales overall, but still have it be the biggest multimedia franchise in the world, mm -hmm. or uh, help the sales How and be even bigger. To... Probably do a short hop on the ledge to get onto the broken one, because yeah, those are slanted. You know what? Whatever, I got the bird. You got the bird. Yeah. This is... Oh, no, I don't want to fall back. <laughs> yeah, just an interesting thing to think about, mm -hmm. you know? It's always interesting to think, what if X Company disappeared from the planet forever and all their history was removed, too? Yeah. Shit, no. Back here. It's like, what's a company that's massive in the video game industry that would impact it the least if it disappeared and none of its accomplishments ever existed? That would impact the least. I think Konami is who I focus on here. Maybe? I don't know if it would affect video games, but I do think it would affect card games more. That is true. That is something I had not considered. And I, it would definitely affect video games. They made, they have Metal Gear and mm, they have okay. uh, Silent Hill. All right. I just think of the, of the mega conglomerates. Yeah. They're the ones that would impact it the least. Mm -hmm. Maybe them or Blizzard. But Blizzard... Ironically enough, if Blizzard never existed, there'd probably be more good in the industry. Yeah. Especially with all the, the shit going on with them, right? Yeah, I wasn't even... Yeah, I was talking strictly on a product standpoint, but yeah. Less harassment in the video game industry would also be pretty sick. Uh-huh. No! Oh, oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> No way we're going back I can't to the believe sewers. this. How much time has passed? Oh my god. I have 30 minutes to get back to where we were. Oh god. I oh. this is the last place I ever wanted to see. <laughs> oh my god. I hate that drain. We were in this drain in the 15th minute of this episode. Yeah. Well, God. Cameron, how does it feel knowing that there you have two hours of your life documented where literally nothing happened? <laughs> hey, we don't know that nothing has happened. You did 
get past the first area for now <laughs> yeah ah oh, fuck oh, but uh no. i have made it farther oh that was almost really bad oh my god <laughs> oh it's, you jinxed it i'm sorry <laughs> Please don't fuck that jump up. Please don't fuck that jump up. I didn't. We're not dropping any lower currently. See, that's what you gotta do. You gotta say, uh, right now. Then it doesn't jinx it because you're leaving it up. And there we go. <laughs> Now we're back to this room. It's been a while since we've seen this color palette. Yeah, I didn't. I don't like seeing this color palette. I actually think currently my least favorite part of this game is the drain. Really? Yeah. If it wasn't for the shit stains, I'd like it a lot more. The shit. I kinda you nasty. see, I don't like the drain because it's de designed entirely around the fact that if you miss one jump, you go to the bottom. That's fair. Yeah. So don't mess up. And a couple of the jumps are really, really annoying. This area, False King's Keep, I like significantly more. Even if it does have that thing on the left, I've... I have fallen more in the drain than I have in, I think, every other part of the game. The drain is pretty annoying. Yeah. I'm starting to run out of talking steam. I've been stalking almost straight for two hours. Yeah, sorry. It's I can see if I had any talking points on my phone. But at the same time, I'm also playing. That's fair. Which makes it really difficult for me to just drop the controller. So what day is today? Uh, Like actually? No. The day that this is releasing? Yeah, what day is this in-universe? Uh, in universe, this should be the third. Oh yeah, yeah, January third. <laughs> Why did I establish this? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what? This is an in universe time. Why are Why are we in a universe? I don't know. It's what you said. But now it's sticking. Yeah, that's our that's our show. Yep. But yeah. There's a good article out there somewhere about Pokemon on Sega platforms. Ah, uh, that would, uh, the one you closed and lost? Yeah. Oh yeah, speaking of fucking Pokemon and Game Boys and whatnot, the Analog Pocket analog finally pocket? came out. The hell is the Analog Pocket? I've got a picture of it here if you can turn your head for a sec. Yeah. That's just a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, you'd think so, huh? It's a fucking... Very expensive Game Boy. Why? Why would you buy an expensive Game Boy? Well, you can't really buy a cheap Game Boy anymore, to be fair. You can't? No, I've been looking for a DMG-001 Game Boy for a while, but they're like a hundred bucks. What was the, all the extra stuff you were saying there? What, DMG-001? Yeah. Original. Okay. Well, maybe if you want an original Game Boy, yeah. You can find cheap Game Boys. Like what? I'm pretty sure they're cheap Game Boy colors. Not really, because if I could get a color, I would throw that in the shell I have. I just... I also don't know if the Game Boy color internals work in a Game Boy shell. It probably would. I know. I think the color is slightly smaller than the original, right? It should work, but I'm... I don't know. Either way, the color is like 100 bucks as well. I'm just... I have a wood shell for my Game Boy that I've had for a long time. And I can't make a Raspberry Pi thing with it without doing some serious mods to it. So I just want to put an actual Game Boy into this point so I can have it. Mm. So I, I love the Game Boy. The, the, the original Game Boy is my favorite Nintendo console. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing. I have no... I've, I've never owned one. I've never played any of the games legitimately besides on my 3DS. Mm -hmm. And it has almost my favorite... It has it's actually my favorite library of any Nintendo console. Okay. So I just kind of need one for, like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not anti-emulation by any means, clearly. Yeah. But I would just want one for authenticity's sake because it's way more fun to play on an actual hardware. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, the Analog Pocket is 
a super Power Bolt Game Boy that does something. I remember reading about this about three years ago. Yeah. Then that's been on the way for a long time. Yeah. There we go. Probably longer. Damn. Yeah, I believe that I Fuck. was going to kickstart one of these in 2016. Okay. Yeah, it is a Game Boy, basically, that has a much nicer screen with no real bezel. Mm-hmm. Like, the bezel is actually screen. Like, it's adjustable. Okay. Really, really nice high-quality buttons. A cast iron, like, really nice shell. Mm -hmm. It's designed with a 3.5, 6, 6, 615 PPI LCD screen with a 1600 by 1440 resolution. Okay. It has 10 times the resolution of an original Game Boy. Neat. Pro-level color accuracy, dynamic range. The display is even made from Gorilla Glass. There's never been a display this advanced in a video game system before. It does Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Atari Lynx, every Game Boy game ever released. And basically, if it was a single screen system that was a portable console, it plays it. Okay. It's it quite also, a lot. It also has a digital audio workstation inside of it and can be used as an instrument. Okay. It's a random thing to also be. Yeah, it's just also... You can even connect Pocket to your Mac or PC or other hardware with MIDI and sync cables. All right. Press the power button and the Pocket will suspend gameplay and enter a low power sleep mode. Press the power button to wake it up and pick again where you left off. Also, it does not support emulation officially, but oh. people have already broken it. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I gotta go to the left. Now, what is the nece What do I need to do? I I think you need to take a left jump from the middle platform. I think you just need to be super precise on it. On this? Yes. But this I is. I know you looks like you'll. You, but you, I know you'll bonk your head, but it. I don't think you'll fall down from bonking. I don't know. Maybe you need to jump to the left behind that bush and like bonk and go around. Right now, but what I think I have to do is jump onto the thing the, the dude's at under. The top? Yeah, the thing the dude's on. Yeah, and then maybe you need to like. But then, like, where do you go from there? I'm imagining I then climb up onto the other two poles. Can you make that jump? I guess. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Yeah, okay. Jump right. Yeah. Oh, oh my no, God. there's wind now and, snow. and it changes. Yeah, all right. This is oh no. Oh no. The analog pocket also comes with a dock so that you can connect it oh, no. to an HD TV. You can sync up any wireless 8 bit dough Bluetooth controller directly to the dock. And it has up to four player support. You can connect. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, it it supports link cables, it supports official uh, accessories for all the platforms, Uh huh. it supports unofficial accessories, and it has a dock, and you can play on a TV, and you can play multiplayer, like, without multiple shit. That's neat. So, like, it's kind of, it's, its goal is to allow you to play any handheld gaming system ever, basically. The analog pocket is supposed to be like a video game history machine, basically. All right. Also, it comes with a dev kit. Neat. That's nice. I didn't want that. And that dev kit is also why emulation's possible. Yeah. But yeah, you can build Game Boy games, and I'm assuming probably sell them for distribution online so that other people can play them. Uh huh. Pocket is designed for FPGA development. We added a second dedicated FPGA just for developers to develop and port their own cores. With access to Nlog's proprietary hardware and scalers, we think developers are going to do some amazing things. Ah! Uh... Oh, we're back here, huh? Yeah, we're back in bargain. Yeah, okay, so 
not only is this thing supposed to be like basically quote unquote the future of pocket of like handheld gaming uh -huh. the future and past but it allows you to develop for it and it's going to have its own marketplace for people who buy these that's neat so it's like i genuinely think this is a really good thing to have in the video game ecosystem yeah they are just ungodly expensive are they how They're much 200 ish bucks yeah that's not as bad as i remember it being to be fair but they're being scalped to hell and back. Two hundred dollars yeah. for this is actually pretty nice. I think that's a good price point. Oh fuck! No. Mm, I don't know if I think it's a good price oh, point. Oh shit! As much my anymore. screen went off. Hold up. No, it didn't. It just got darker. I just couldn't see it. Why did your screen get darker? I have no clue. That's weird. Yeah. How long have we been recording? Uh, it said an hour 41. Okay. I uh, think a little bit less of this thing now that the adapters for each different console are 30 bucks. Oh, no. I mean, that's fair, but, like, it should support it out of the box. Well, these are so you can plug in cartridges, right? Yeah. And you, they would need a lot then, right? Yeah. I get it. I get it, but I'm unhappy. <laughs> You'd hope that for two hundred dollars it would come with them. Yeah, I yeah, but like at the same time I get it. Two hundred dollars for the base console is honestly it's probably still being sold at a loss. Probably. Hardware just doesn't sell. Or it just doesn't, uh, it's too expensive. It's, yeah, it's, they've been working on this thing for several years. Yeah. And it's not like it is any worse at its goal than it plans to be. Plus, if, if I really want to and play some of the games that I don't have, I'm certain emulators will be made for it, but like, yeah. For legal reasons, that's a joke. <laughs> Emulation is not good if it's for games you don't own. Yeah, it's illegal. Don't do it. It's illegal to emulate games you do not own. Piracy is not okay. That being said, if you know any good piracy websites, Please link them to me so that <laughs> I know what to avoid. Yeah. Let me know your favorite piracy website that has high-speed high downloads. No, no don't tell us your favorite. Tell you, tell us your least favorite yeah, yeah, yeah. quotation. Your, 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 your least favorite piracy <laughs> website that has no problems at all and is scarily good at getting all those games that Nintendo and whatnot worked really hard to get up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing more to talk about. You got nothing? I got nothing. So, I got an idea. You got an idea? These last 20, 30 minutes, we swap off. Okay, just like right now? Yeah, effectively, I do this. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll go make sure the stream is still going. Make sure it the... should, because okay. it's capturing the switch entirely. Yeah. As long as my mic still plugged in, I can't tell. Yes. Okay. What's the button? The button A. 